yo yo what's up everybody this is your boy isaac and this is your boy bryce and we are brothers on tennis and folks we have wrapped up yet another grand slam tournament man oh man bryce was that french open not insane or what bro it, yeah it was good Dog. and i was really 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 happy with the results um, of the French <laughs> Open for a whole bunch of different reasons, and I know we'll get into that. But uh, I, I, look, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, I am just really impressed by the great job that was done by so many people for us to get in two more majors this year. There, I can remember there's one. There, we were at one point when we thought the Australia may have been the only no. major we were going to get in. That's um, right. Uh, this year, so for all of, and I know we gave them their props before, but. For everyone who made the U.S. Open go off, just I think as a wonderful event, and uh, ditto to the people in Paris for the French Open, um, job well done. It, I can I can only reiterate what you have said, my friend. Job well done. I mean, just with everything and all of the uncertainty and all the craziness. I mean, they really really did a very, very nice job across both of those tournaments to make them happen. I mean, just right. if you were involved in any way in making the U.S. Open or the French Open right. Roland Garros happen, pat yourself on the back because you right. did a great job. And mm -hmm. in players alike, I mean, for all of you guys, man, I certainly enjoyed these last couple weeks here, bro. It, right. it was entertaining to say the least. Right. Man, crazy. So let's let's go ahead and and, and jump into it. And yeah, I, I yeah. don't know uh, which one you want to start with, the women or the men. I think we need to start with the women because there is a lot <laughs> <laughs> to talk about on the men's side. I mean, just just yeah, every, there's so much on the men's side. I say we start with the women. Uh -huh. Talk about you know just what we saw, how how interesting things were and uh and yeah yeah let's let, let's 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 chat about it right well i first of all want to give a shout out to anybody that predicted that the finals uh, for the women was going to be uh, <laughs> kennan versus Suratek. anybody 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 that from day one you need to be making you some big money in vegas Dollars, <laughs> coins. I didn't have neither one of those heifers in the final. <laughs> and, um, right? I but, mean, I'm sorry, none you know, of them. Yeah, but I will tell you this. Um, I was so pleased mm -hmm. with the final. And, and I'm going to just go ahead and get this out real quick. Yes. Uh, so that I don't have to address this again. There has always been something about Kenan that has kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and you know, I you know, I kind of felt bad about it, and I was like, she's American. I need to be supporting her. This and that. So I've I've been trying to give her a chance, right. and the French Open just really showed for me that this just this is just a chick I don't care for, <laughs> right? Nor, nor nor her father, and um, whether it was did they say the father got called for coaching four times? I believe so. In, in, in the tournament, yeah. uh, at that point, it's not about. I know we say all the time, you know, everybody does it with the coaching and all that kind of stuff. But when you get called for it, you do typically make an adjustment, right? You don't sit there and blatantly say, well, you know, you know, for what we're doing, I'll pay that. You know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do, right? right? So that showed me a little something about her father and, you know, kind of how he rolls. And with Kenan, I mean, the emotional roller coaster with her, I don't care for her swagger, her disposition. I totally agree with Mary Carrillo. I think that was gamesmanship on her leaving the court yeah. on the second set. And so I was so happy that Iga just was like, you know what? <laughs> you do what you need to do. Do you. I'm going to be I'm right here. Me. <laughs> I'm going to be doing my stretches and my, my arm swings. And the beating that you've taken, it's going to continue when you come back. Exactly. It ain't stopping. You know? <laughs> So, needless to say, I was truly in uh, Suartek's camp uh, for the finals. Uh, she did the damn thing, and uh, I really like this young lady, and I think she has right? a very, very bright future. I mean, Bryce, where in the hell did she come from? I mean, what surprised me so much is, I, and shame on me for sleeping, 
because yeah. I didn't even know how successful she was a ju as a junior. She right. won Junior Wimbledon. I didn't even know that. I was mm -hmm. like, well, damn, okay, if you've won Junior Wimbledon, then you're doing some things, and you ain't right. gonna be scared of that moment. You gonna right. you 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 know because Coco Golf has been there. You get right. you know you you have experience in a moment, so mm -hmm. you're not gonna be scared of it. And I didn't realize that until they said. And when they said that, I was like, okay, right now I'm thinking a little bit differently about you. Right. I'm I'm trying to tell you, Bryce. She and 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 kudos for her for just her overall like development, the fact that she had a psychologist in her box, mm -hmm. a sports psychologist to work right. on that mental. Y'all, y'all don't understand. Sports psychology is no joke. It can right. definitely play a major role right. in your success on the pro tour. Because to me, it's all about those little inches, those little right. things that you can do to set yourself apart. And she right. was like, boom, I'm gonna make sure my mental is tight. And that's why you saw her stepping all up on Halep and all these other ones. It's like, am I scared of you? My mental is good, <laughs> right, right? Right, right, I mean, Bryce, it was, I, at, the more research I did on Sviatek, I was like, I like this girl. I like her a lot. I like her game. Mm -hmm. She got that nice kind of whippy forehand. I really like her backhand is real tight and consistent. Bro, right. I, I was extremely impressed with her. Extremely. Right. And a couple of things that I liked about her was I found out that they had tried to get her to go pro as a teen and she was like no yeah. i'm in school no. i'm gonna finish school for That's so she had the mind do you know how many people that have the ability to go pro that make the actual decision not to do it because they value their education isn't that, that amazing that, yeah that's huge and then the second thing that i like about her is that when i was watching her play even above feeling like i was watching a tennis player i felt like i was watching an athlete and she reminded, I mean, for all you old school people, with the exception of her having a two-handed backhand, believe it or not, she reminded me a lot of Hannah Malakoba. Wow. And just a very smooth mover on the court. And, for, and also for people that weren't paying attention, she wasn't just doing it in singles. She made it all the way to the semifinals in doubles. So exactly. she had the best tournament of anybody, anybody. On, the women, on the women's side. And so... You know, you, you wonder about these young players coming in the game and how balanced they are and, you know, can they, you know, handle the rigors of the professional tour. You just have a sense that she is just so on solid ground that all of her preparation has now, you know, brought her to this point in her life where I think she's going to represent. Do I think she's about to become the number one player in the world and win 25 major titles? No, but I do think she is going to be a top tenner, and I do yes. think she's going to have uh, some good success. And I don't believe that, that this was a fluke. I do believe she will win other majors in her career. I absolutely agree with that. I, I completely agree with that. I think that she is, like you said, I agree with the whole thing. I don't think she she's not a Serena in my eyes. She just doesn't. I don't know that I see that level of talent with her. But at the same time, I see her being a potential multi grand slam champion for mm -hmm. sure. I, mm -hmm. I really do. I really do. And, and, and Bryce, I tell you what, I'll touch upon something real quick as well. Um, because I, I feel very similar to how you feel about, uh, about Kenan. Right. And while I say that though, what I will also say is I see her winning a few more grand slams as well, because mm -hmm. she's, she's just got that, that, you call it fight, call it, you know, you know, that I'm going to prove you wrong, call, call it whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, but she got it. she got right. it. And, 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 and like I said, the fact that again, she, she took them double bagels from Azarenka before the tournament mm -hmm. to be able to flip that around and make it to the final. Right. Hey, you may not like the girl, but the girl know how to, how to compete. She knows right. how to compete. She knows how to fight. I thought my, my my girl crazy Danielle Collins was going to get up on her. Right, and right. she was just like, no, nah, Danielle, this, no, nah, sister, this ain't your day. This is my day. Right, right. So I, I, you have to give her props for that. I mean, like I said, she's like like you. She's not necessarily my favorite player. Her antics on the court, her and the father, they got to get all that stuff worked out. But right. again, kudos to her for, A, winning the Australian Open and making it to the final of the French mm -hmm. Open. That's, that's pretty damn impressive. It really, is. really is. And, and there's one more thing I want to add, though, that this final kind of brought to light for me. 
Kenan is the type of player that, you know, the aces that she has in her hand are really, you know, like you're saying, that dedication, that willingness to fight and all that kind of stuff. What she is not, though, is she is not what I consider super athletic. And I do believe that as we go forward, your people like your uh, Andrescu's, your Osaka's, your uh, Suratex, these people that are more athletic and have those type of games, they will be the ones that will have the edge on her. Yes, if, agreed. Now, if they're not on their games, Kenan is the type of player that would beat them, right? right? But she can be handled, uh, I guess be ghetto, if you will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think by players that are uh, just more athletically inclined uh, than she is. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, she'll be around. She'll be around. Like I said, I don't know that she's going to get the greatest fanfare just because of the way, you know, she's going to have to definitely flip all of that around. Hopefully if she can hang out a little bit more with Bethany Magic Sands, because I love me some Bethany, Bethany, my girl, you know, right. hopefully a little bit of that can rub off on her. Because uh -huh. you can be, you can, like I said, you can be competitive, but you ain't got to be all like all she, right. to me, she just, she, she's more or less like a spoiled brat out there. And that's right. not how you want to come across when you are out there competing, you know, right. just, you know, have some, some level of respect, even though you are competing to win and you want to, you definitely want to crush the person, but still, you know, be a good sport. Right. So. And, and, and I see some of these comments coming through and yeah, Paul, I see the, I uh, <laughs> cannot, I, I love your name. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, um, and Nick, yeah, the, the dad did get fined, we believe, four times. different times for uh, coaching. But something that they're bringing out in the comments that we should probably make note to of is, and this is, and, you know, and this is feedback all in development, right? Yeah. Is that Kenan needs to, somebody needs to work on her communications, right? Because she comes across as a little bit of a sore loser. Um, um, and, and, and when you contrast with the way Ega was, right? Right. Was just overly gracious. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is, and I was mentioning this uh, to a friend earlier this week, I think there's a reason why, even though Kenan has won the Australian Open, that you haven't really seen her in a lot of marketing or advertising right. or that kind of stuff. She doesn't right. have that kind of appeal to people. And nobody will hurt advertising they <laughs> stuff um so and, and that's not necessary she doesn't have to have that in her career if she doesn't want to but uh she definitely has some limiting aspects to her persona and her yes. game yes. um but i do believe she's going to remain in the mix i believe she will remain in the yeah. top 10 for for many years to come um you know given no injuries or anything like that but yeah, it yeah. just justifies for me personally a little bit the way I feel <laughs> about her. Exactly, but that and 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 Bryce, I don't want to jump topic, but I just I have to ask you this question because mm -hmm. both of you and I were kind of on this on this swing once you know everything unfolded. We did our right. mid fortnight, and we were just like, ah, oh, Svitolina, she's gonna get through. Right. What happened to your girl Svitolina, bro? I mean, our girl, because I, I, I claim her as well. I right. put her in the gym's life. I, you know, she, she my girl with Gael. But I tell you what, I was extremely disappointed in her showing against, um, I was going to call her Ponderosa again. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but Pater, Paterosca, Pater, Paterosca, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, steak right. and potatoes. I'm going to call it steak and potatoes. Because right. steak and potatoes had some for Svitolina, and she was just like, no, nah, get on out right. of here. Right. And shame on her. Shame on her, bro. What was your take on that match? Well, I, I do think she missed an opportunity. Uh, I, you know, she still may have been taken out by Sriatan. But uh, so <laughs> I'm not going to say she was going to win because I, I think Eagle uh, was kind of destined. Uh, Eagle was on a mission, yeah. Right. But, you know, she's going to need something to happen because she plays well in all these smaller tournaments. She's racked up all these titles and all this kind of stuff. But she gets you know, something happens in the majors where she, she's not getting the job done. Um, and I tell you what, it's only going to get tougher. I keep mentioning there is a crew of women coming up yes. and, and, and the WTA that is just, 
you know, they if fire you, man. Right now, I'm not going to go to the stream of saying she's never going to win one because she has too much game and, and she's really good. And, and there's too many opportunities for a draw to break right for her or whatever. But I don't know, man. I don't know that, she, you know, I think Fitalina is going to be one of those kind of people like maybe like a Wozniacki that's going right. to, she's going to always be in the mix. There's always mm -hmm. going to be like that player that takes her out in the end, and she may get an opportunity like Wozni. Look, Wozni actually got what? a player she was like, look, I'm out. Out. Bounce. <laughs> right? A holla. I, I know this ain't going to happen again. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to put that on Fitalina, but that's just a, kind of the impression that she gives me. Yeah, yeah. I have to be honest with you. I, I agree as well. Um, you know, it's just, you know, because I like her, but at the same time, I it just – there's some, there's just some things that she's got to really, really tidy up. I mean, the mental right. side and, and even, even, you know, she's a good athlete, but she's, she, I don't necessarily see anything that is great about her game. Right. And that's right. really where I struggle because she does everything very well, right. but I just don't know that I see anything overly like, boom, this is what's going to get her that grand slam. Right. And, and, and I think it's like you said, some things are going to have to fall into place, mm -hmm. which, in my opinion, was this draw. But again, like you said, Sviatek, Sviatek would have probably taken her out, but I right. at least think she should have gotten past Ponder, uh, Ponderoska. <laughs> Steak and potatoes. I'm gonna Steak make and potatoes. You, I'm going to make you keep calling her Ponderosa. <laughs> well, <laughs> and hopefully we get a chance to talk about her again because her coming through qualities and making it all the way to the, the semis. Listen... Uh, I, you know, I don't know if that is something we're going to see much more in the future or if this was kind of like a... I, I hope so. She seems like a pretty interesting character. I wouldn't uh, mind seeing something from her. You know and, what I'm saying? An Ostapenko <laughs> type thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. So we are very happy for Surat Tech uh, yes. and for her picking that up. Uh, it's awesome that she's a huge Rafael Nadal fan. So... You know, that's crazy. Here's the other thing. Prince, go ahead and step up. You know, she stated she didn't even have a racket deal. Um, so, really? Yes. Yeah, I did. missed that in the, in the, in the, okay, wow. So I, I saw there was something, Prince put something out where uh, I guess they're, because she's using a Prince racket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I guess they're just kind of like, okay, we need to just go ahead and roll you in. Yeah, we need uh, to get you in. Come, <laughs> come on here. Come here. But, uh. <laughs> But props to her. She's now number 17 in the world, top 20 mm -hmm. player. Um, and uh, I'm putting her on Team Bryce. Uh, you know, I, 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 I can see that. I ain't nothing wrong with that. She, she's in the squad. She's definitely in the squad. We will be looking at her, looking at her results. And, uh, uh -huh. yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's see what she can do going forward. So kudos to Iga Spatek. Right. Good now, job. Now, before we move over to the men, we just want to give a shout out to Babos mm -hmm. and Milanovic. How about winning. that? Yeah, for them pulling another one. Look. The repeat. Because yeah. they won last year, too. So they repeat. Both of the doubles teams repeated. Isn't that some yeah. craziness? It is. Dude. And, and Milanovic, I tell you what, she, her, she's really a difference maker in doubles. I mean, she is. Um, I think uh, I heard somebody say one time she uses singles to kind of fill out the court conditions <laughs> for her doubles matches. Um, but she, um, oh man, yeah, yeah. Congratulations to to both that team and to uh, what is it? It was Maze and Kravich. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, uh, there you go. The yeah. the guys that was doing all the work, uh, they you at know the at the grocery, grocery store. store. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so good for them. That, that's that's good karma coming karma coming back uh, to them. I agree. So let's move to the men and let's start yeah. at the semifinal. Cool, cool. Stage, right? Yes. Uh, so we had in the first semifinal, we had, uh, well, not the first one that was shown, but we'll go to it because uh, it's Djokovic, not C. <laughs> right. Um, he was playing CC Pass. And, and, you know, and it looked initially in those first two sets like, he was just going to roll through Stefanos like he had been rolling through everybody. But uh, Stefanos was like, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You know? and, um, <laughs> talk to me about that, Isaac. What happened? Bruh, I, I tell you what, I don't know if it was a, a level of tightness that came into Djokovic's game or if CeCe Pass just 
you know, flipped the switch and was like, yo, wait a minute. I, you know, I, I got to step my game. Back. Whatever it was, he, he broke and then broke again. and was like, took that third set. And I was like, okay, all right. He's, it looked like he might be in this for a little bit. And he fought, man. He fought, he fought the good fight. I was really impressed with, you know, how he was trying to get himself you know, back back into it, if you will. So, yeah, wow. man. What about you, bro? What did you think of that turnaround? You know, I I was I was happy for Cecil Tuss because you know I'm one of the ones that's kind of touting him to be a member of that next big three that's right. coming up. And so, right. you know, I was a little disappointed in you know the U.S. Open, obviously. Right for yeah. 65 so uh, i was like oh man are you gonna just like not show up kind of again and um and not that he didn't show up in the u.s open he choked. <laughs> he just uh, choked he yeah i was about to say he showed up and choked <laughs> so when he ended up so when he came back and he he took that third and the fourth set i said okay that's the cc pass you know that i'm 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 looking for but didn't he take like a bread stick in the yeah in he the took some bread <laughs> <laughs> Joe yeah. Rich is like, now listen, <laughs> I done had enough of this. <laughs> I done played around with you enough, son. You need to go get off my damn court. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so he did kind of spank him up and fed him that uh -huh. fifth set. But but again, like you said, I still appreciate the fact that he, you know, found it within himself to turn it around and and make it a really tight a, a tight battle. You know what I mean? So, right. so yeah. And, and you're right, Bryce. I mean, CeCe Paz is that guy. He is going to be, you know, the one. Once the big three kind of, you know, they retire, he right. will most definitely be one of the very few at the top of the game. I see him being right. a number one. I see him winning multiple Grand Slams. So right. it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. So I, I still don't, you know, I don't think anything of this. I don't think it's going to, you know, hurt him in any way. Um, it's just, you know, power for the course right now, the big, the big three. And if you want to just say the big two, they, they just rough, man. They rough. Right. I mean, we'll see when Roger comes back, how he does against, you know, right. against him. But, but Djokovic and Nadal, I'm sorry. They just, they're, they're just a different breed, a different level and, and, and Federer, you cannot it not include Federer in that. Right. Um, right. I mean, it's the big three. They, their games are just, they're just magnificent. And each right. of them. You know, and they're so different in the sense that, again, with Rafa and all his spin and all of, you know, just right. his, his you know, that warrior mentality. And then you got Djokovic, who's kind of the Gumby, who just Mr. Right. Defense, Mr. Offense. And then you got Federer, who's just smooth and just, you know, smooth and creamy and just boom, boom and hitting all the nice winners. and everything. I mean, they are just three incredible Incredible gentleman, and it right. goes to show for the numbers. Now it's twenty, twenty, and seventeen. Right, so right, right. there you go. And I'll tell you what. I'm a now. It, it, well, I know we we gonna we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff here, bro. But I, that Rafael Nadal, <laughs> Rafael Nadal is like, listen, just put that red stuff under my feet. <laughs> That's all I need, friend. That's all I need. Put it under right. my feet. Call it the French Open, and you better know I'm going to get it done. Right, I'm going right. to get it done. I was just sitting there like, I earned the – not that I didn't respect Rafa, because I, of course, respect Rafa. I right. love Federer, but I respected Rafa. But I'll right. tell you what, Rafa even went up yep. a, a notch for me right. after that final. I was just like, this dude – right. I, I just have no words. I'm going to turn it back over to you. It's amazing, dude. Well, you know – I just owned up to not calling anything on the women's uh, <laughs> prediction. But this is what I predicted. I predicted it was going to be a Djokovic and Nadal final, and I predicted that Nadal was going to win. And I had, I was on several calls yeah. on, on the locker room app where we had these tennis pundits mm -hmm. who were like, oh, Djokovic is going to do it this year. They're going to meet in the finals, and Djokovic is going to win, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm just sitting there like, are y'all crazy? Insane. Mm -hmm. Insane. Rafael, Nadal, Rafael Nadal, once he has made it to the semifinals of the French Open, has never, ever, ever, ever lost. Never. Never, ever, ever, ever lost. Never. And, <laughs> and, and, and my thing is, I am not going to pick somebody else as long as there's somebody in the room who has 12 titles behind them and has never lost in the final. I'm going to pick them until they lose. 
You use a, use a smart one. It, yes. It can be six years from now. And, and, he, and if he Bryce, hasn't lost yet, I'm still picking a dog to win. And Bryce, that's where I flip. Because remember, you know I, my prediction. I was predicting, uh, predicting team and, and, you know, team. I, simply put, that's what flipped for me. Bryce, I am now re, reconsidering my thought process around Will Djokovic end up having the most Grand Slam? Because I'm going to be honest with you. If Nadal can come into conditions like they were, heavier, Mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff, different balls. And mind you, he was crying and doing all that whining and stuff, which we'll get into that too because I didn't like that. But anyway, (laughs) he was doing all that. And to still be able to just go through that entire field, not lose a set. Not lose a set. And was like, bitches, get out my way. I'm sorry. Rafael Nadal, I am predicting he will probably end up getting, in, at the end of it all, he may end up having about 18 French Opens. I honestly feel like he's got another five in him because he wasn't even playing his best. I don't even think early <laughs> on in this tournament, right. I honestly do not feel like he was even playing his best tennis. And yet, and he still won without try, try. It's just, it is mind-blowing to me, bro. And, and- and wait a minute, not only did he win, in the finals, he played the person that everyone is saying is heads and shoulders right now above everybody else. They're saying he really should be undefeated. He, you know, <laughs> his only loss is when he went all day <laughs> and on, on, a, on an umpire with a, with a tennis ball to the throat. And he, right? Rafa stepped out and gave him a bagel and a whole biscuit. He was like, bitch, you hungry. <laughs> He was like, you are all clay. Bitch, you are hungry. Get out of here. He was like, I'm going to give you this bacon and this whole biscuit. Go on. Get somewhere. Mm-hmm. What, Bryce, how yeah. you feed the number one player in the role, not once, but in two sets. Two when sets. They, when they come into your house. That's it. When, 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 yeah. you are, when you are a host at your house and somebody come visit you, what do mm. you do? You mm. feed them. You feed them. something to eat, right? You do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So he came up in Rafa's house, and Rafa was like, "Oh, you're a guest of mine. Yeah, Here, come on in. Let me give you something to eat." And he gave you him that hungry. bagel, and then he said, "After the bagel, he said, you still look hungry.' You still look hungry. We got this whole business in the back <laughs> that, like Janet Jackson, it's all for you." And, it's, gonna, I, and, and, <laughs> and then on top of that. The way that third set was starting out, like, oh, right? Man, oh, he's here we go. He's still in the kitchen. Oh, dude, you are killing me. I can't breathe. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just oh trying my to tell god! You, you come so, up my house, I'm gonna give you something to eat. And ooh, so, see, you got me sweating up in here. I'm trying to tell you, people, y'all better, y'all better recognize. Rafael the doll was not to be played with Sunday morning. He was like, uh-huh. "Man, you that came up into my crib." No, I got some for you. Right. Got some for you. Yep. Oh, yep. Bryce, like I said, he earned, it, it, it just, I, I honestly, literally, he got 13. I honestly, he's, he's 34. And right. mind you, we're already talking about Federer almost 40, and we're still right. talking about him potentially winning Grand Sam. Why the hell can't right. Rafa win at 40? I honestly believe he's got another five more French Opens in him. I literally, I believe he is going to end up surpassing Serena. I really do. Because if Serena don't step up and, and get her Grand Slam and Rafael get him five more French, that's 25. Right. And you know what's so interesting, and I, this is slightly off the topic, but as I'm watching the comments that are happening here on Instagram Live, uh-huh. they're, mi- they're mirroring a lot of things that were said in our social media this week, which was, I was surprised at the number of people that said all they wanted this weekend was for Kennan and Djokovic to lose. <laughs> well, it goes to their, it goes to them as champions. I'm just saying, y'all yeah. might want to get you, might want to think about that. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I know who I was going for in the final. I was most definitely rooting for Rafael because oh, I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. I don't mind him winning twenty, but I'm sorry, y'all, mm-hmm. I, Djokovic just. Over these last months, if you will, with the pandemic, with all of the silliness that he'd be doing, I just, I, I respect his game. I respect him as a champion and, and his tennis. But the stuff outside of that, 
I, I struggle with Djokovic. So, no, I went into that final very clearly in the Rafael Nadal, Nadal right. court camp. And, I then, mean. and then to continue showing the Fidal love, and for those of you that is <laughs> Federer Nadal, that's their name, go out to Roger Federer's um, social media. He wrote the most beautiful um, congratulations um, message to Rafael uh, for winning. And I know he was real happy about Djokovic losing, but um, it was just <laughs> really, really nice. And yeah. um, that it, it's so amazing to see two people that are, you know, on the court, they're competitors. And yeah. right, you know, we're, we're not yeah. even seeing competitors really have a genuine friendship and like and love for each other. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, that, that's a beautiful thing to see. It really is, man. I mean, I, I honestly believe they're truly friends. And I think it's kind of like even, you know, like the whole Johnny Mack and uh, Bjorn Borg. I mean, like I said, he drove him out the game, but Johnny knew the significance of right. Borg, as uh-huh. does Roger understands the significance of Rafa and vice versa. They, they, right. they need each other. They yeah. need each other. They've they've lifted one another. Right. And and I and like I said, I know Djokovic always gets the bad rap is oh he tried to infiltrate the but he's doing himself a disservice just by being dumb. He's just right. doing dumb shit. That's just right. all it is. That's all mm-hmm. it boils down to. If mm-hmm. he wasn't doing dumb stuff, I would most definitely be a fan of his as well. But he's just dumb. He just does stuff that just doesn't make sense to me. And it's hard for me to support him. And that's why you see all these people posting out there, boom, they want Kennan and they wanted Djokovic to lose this weekend. Right. It goes to that likability. And I'm going I'm to I'm add just one more dimension to it. I, and, and I may not get a whole lot of supporters on this, but I don't care. Um, Djokovic, to me, is actually a fairly boring player to watch. Mm. I, I don't get very excited watching him. I enjoy watching Federer. I like his game style. I enjoy watching Nadal. I like mm-hmm. his game style. I have an appreciation for what Djokovic can do, you know, uh, but it's not exciting tennis for me. If if I'm not interested in the person that Djokovic is playing or right. there's not a real potential for that person to beat Novak, I pretty right. much don't watch the match. Yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, that. I agree with that. Yeah, it's like you want to, yeah, you have to have some, some type of an investment in there. And so if right. you really aren't invested in the person that's playing, then, and like I said, I feel the same way. I, I'm not, I don't watch a lot of Novak Djokovic uh, matches, only if he's, again, playing somebody that I really like and or appreciate. So, right. Hey, I'm yeah, getting man. some support. I'm getting some support. People oh, are yeah? <laughs> saying, yeah, they, they find <laughs> Novak boring, too. I, 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 I guess I'm not so crazy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, again, it goes to, again, it's that likability. Um, because, I mean, you know, I, I feel like Medvedev has kind of a similar game. But at the same time, I like watching him. I'll watch yeah. him over Novak, I tell you that right. much. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just, I think it's, it has a lot to do with the players themselves. If you're invested right. in the person or the player, then it makes their game and watching their game that more entertaining, if you will. So, right. yeah, man. But so, crazy, man. Crazy, right. crazy. So wonderful Got weekend. Fed. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Wonderful weekend. And I think that was one of the best French Opens I've seen Rafa play in the final, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, obviously, one of them when he put them things on Federer <laughs> a number of years ago. But, yeah, that that was a great, great uh uh, final and and Rafa was like to all you doubters, stop it. Yeah, you know, yeah. just just stop it. Yeah, and when I'm at the French Open, when I'm at well, when, when I'm at the French Open and I'm playing in the stadium that will be eventually named the Rafael <laughs> Nadal Stadium, right? <laughs> you know, can't stop, won't stop. Can't you know? stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, friend. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> And I guess maybe that's why I was a little bit annoyed with him at the beginning of the tournament. And that's why I said I was going to bring some of this up. See, now, I, I need Rafa to do better, though. I need him to stop all that whining. Because he got there and he was like, oh, it's so cold. And, oh, the balls are so different. They mess with my arm. It's dangerous. I, fool, you are Rafa on the dog and you're on clay. I want you to stop all that nonsense and that right. noise. I want right. you to get out there and play tennis, which is exactly what you did. Right. And honestly, you took it to them fools like nobody's business. So don't be getting out there with all of the drama. That, that, that to me was not a good look for him. And I, I was a little bit disappointed with him early on because of that. And you know what else he said that kind of annoyed me? 
was, and I don't remember if it was in the French or if it was actually after he got sent home in Italian, um, was when he was talking about uh, not liking the underhanded serve. Yeah, what and, the hell? Yeah, and and it's and it's like you know what, Matt? That is a, a that's a good be, ass tactic. Don't be mad because they get you with it. Exactly. You step your game up and, <laughs> and, and, and deal with it, right? That's it's right. A completely legal play. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, matter of fact, it's at the French Open that most people really became aware of it when Michael Chang Michael. to Yvonne Lindell. That's so right. It is a perfectly valid. Uh, shot to hit and don't be like, well, don't be acting like you're not gonna serve. Or, yes, you can. It's, the same thing. <laughs> it's like when you at the net and you do a no look volley. What exactly. Are what are you gonna say then? Oh, don't look like you're gonna hit it that way and then actually hit it this way. <laughs> no, no, dude, I'm gonna need you to calm that energy down because it's yeah. It, that's it's, exactly right. Shit, that's what Federer should have done with uh, to Djokovic at Wimbledon. He'd have won that damn title. Right, right. Just saying, just yeah. saying. I mean, anyway. So yeah. Well, anyway, any uh, final things that you want to say about the the twenty twenty French <laughs> Open and yeah, man, just I, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was just really really great tennis. You know, outstanding. A lot of uh, you know unpredictability on the ladies' side, uh -huh. predictability on the men's side. But again, I don't think nobody predicted the fact that no that. Uh, that Nadal would get out there and spank him on Djokovic like he did. That was right. that was just it was nice. <laughs> was nice. How about you, bro? What, any final thoughts on on your Roland Garros Roland Garros experience? Uh, really, it's it's about um, and I'll just take for the men and the women for the uh, for the women. Hey, everyone, welcome Iga to yep, the top welcome. twenty, and yep. I think she's going to be around and she's going to do some things. And then on the men's side, for all those who were speaking of Nadal's uh, demise, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't going yeah. nowhere. <laughs> He's going to be right there. Now, whether or not he decides to play the rest of the indoor season, like the Paris uh, Masters or the, the end of the year championship, um, you know, I, I could see him skipping. Uh, I, honestly, uh, bro, I, I'm, and that's the other thing as well. That's why I predict him potentially winning another five Roland Garros because he's very smart about his schedule as well. I think as Rafael gets continues to get older, I think he's going to just pare down his hard court um, uh, showings, yep. and he's only going to he's going to play just like Roger did. Like Roger, Roger yep. was like, "Shit, I ain't got to play all that stuff. I'm gonna get myself ready for grass." <laughs> right. And that's exactly what Rafael. I think right. once he starts feeling it a little bit in the body, once he maybe hits about thirty seven, I I believe. I think he will literally only play clay, get the French, and then boom, I'm at home. Come on to my house, folks. Right. I got something for you. And boom, that's it. Save your body. Why not? Now, here's something crazy. I see Paul online is asking <laughs> for our Melbourne predictions. Ooh. Well, I already told you what I'm going to do on the women's side. Until, re until Serena retires, she's my pick going into the tournament. Um, yeah. So for me, for the women, it's going to be Serena. And then for the men, I'm a cheat. It's going to be someone, I, one of the big three. <laughs> How about that? I like that. I'm a cheat. <laughs> but one of the big three. You know, you know, do I still feel like Federer has a hat trick? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I really, really do. If he can come back the way he came back that last time and yeah. showed off in the Australian Open, and, and had that backhand working and where he was <laughs> that backhand. I know it was beautiful that during right. that tournament. Ooh, that backhand was beautiful, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, if Federer can can come back in that type of shape, I, 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 it would be hard for me not to, to, to align with him. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I, yeah, my, my heart always will go with Fed. Well, and Nick is asking us, what does Serena need to do? And so I'll give one thing. Yeah. First thing is she needs to get in better shape. So a little bit, yeah. Now, I, I, although I felt she was really in good shape, at least better, I would say, better, going yeah, even into cool. the French. Because me, remember me and you even saw it. We was like, wait a minute, right? It was like it ain't been that long since the U.S. Open. Serena looked fitter. She actually did look pretty fit going into the French Open. But right. I do agree with you. There's still she needs to do a little bit more work, a little right. bit more, just just that little bit more. And I think that will set her apart. And she what, needs to just get mad. 
I need Serena to play some. I just I need her to just play angry. Don't just put all that stuff to the side and just go back to the old school right. Serena who was like, I hate to lose. I ain't trying to deal with y'all heifers. I'm gonna hit you off the court. I feel like she's lost a bit of that. And right. I and I really feel like she needs to somehow or another tap into that 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 what i call anger that 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 frustration of i will not lose to you you right. know what i mean but pretend everybody is maria sharapova right. that's what i want her to do right. i really do i want her to pretend that everybody across the net from her is maria sharapova if she do that serena williams will definitely win another grand slam right now let me ask you this do you think if if serena goes all of 2021 mm -hmm. without winning a major does she come back in 2022 no i don't believe so i don't believe so i think i think if she gets a full calendar year of grand slams under her belt and if she can't win one of them nah i i, I honestly i could remember she'll be 40 next year right she she i feel like serena will be done i feel like she her and olympia and alexa will be like look y'all we got enough money we're good mm -hmm. right. you know i mean because again at the end of the day serena does have the record let's just right. be clear right exactly i mean do you, you know when you ask your regular tennis player they are not going to be trying to put no damn margaret court over serena williams it ain't gonna happen it's not gonna happen no those so, 11 those 11 majors um um that she won when she was just playing people coming out the bushes <laughs> you know you, you can't you can't put that on you can't on, put that no, no. No, Serena has competed for all 23 of her Grand Slams. So, you, no, no. So, for, so she will have the record regardless. It's really just about the number. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so no. If she ends up going through next year and doesn't win a Grand Slam, I honestly don't believe she will come back in 2022. I right. really don't. Right. I think she'll be like, holla, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm out. Me right. and Olympia are going to go try on some dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, and, 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 and Chet is saying here, I think she's done regardless in 2021. Both sisters yeah. will be done in 2021. Book it. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah. honestly, I think, and especially for Venus, you know, the reason why they even around in 2021 is for the Olympics. Exactly. That's so it. Once that's that's it. done, ain't nobody trying to stay around to, <laughs> what is it, 2024 or whatever no. next time it comes around. So No, they good. Yeah, they good. Yeah. So, yeah. hey, before we run out of time, we've got about yeah. 15 minutes left. I do yeah. want to talk about, we do have a, a, a 500 level Yeah, tournament. we got like, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Well, we only have one 500 level tournament right. going on right. uh, this week. And that, of course, is St. Petersburg Open and, and Russia. And I tell you what, it's a really a pretty good draw um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you have in here. Your top eight seeds are Medvedev. Um, Shapovalov, Rublev, Hachinov, Varvrinka, Rayanic, Koric, and Taylor Fritz. Mm -hmm. And um, and we and, and just you know for a personal note, anybody that's been following us or, or particularly me, I was very excited to see JJ Wolf qualify. Yeah, uh, my, my Cincinnati guy, my Ohio State guy, my Andre Agassi 2.0 guy. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got Rianich in, in the first round. Um, you know, he probably going to take that L, but, you know, uh, happy to see at least he made it into the main draw. Right. Um, I, I was also ecstatic to see today that Tina Sangren got his hat brought to him uh, by uh, <laughs> a, a Russian wild card. Uh, I may have to put him on my team just for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a good day for Americans because Mackie McDonald went out to Bublik. Yeah, um, that's and, to be expected, though. Right, right. Yeah. But the seated Taylor Fritz went out to Cam Norrie. I know. I round. saw that. Yeah. And, and I, I should feel bad about that with Fritz being American, but I like Cam Norm. Norm. I like Cam. I like Cam. I really Cam. do. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ravrinka played the whole Jedi mind trick on Dan <laughs> Evans again. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lost, lost, lost that first set, but came back in one seven six seven five. Oh yeah, um, tough match though. Dan Evans is playing some good tennis these really days. Is. So. He really I, I, is. Yeah, he's he's doing this thing. I actually expect to see uh, some good results from him in twenty twenty one. I really do. Right, but you know these matchups going into tomorrow for the rest of the week. Uh, this is a good tournament to watch. 
I, I, I would say so. You got all that good, you know, the Russian talent, all the, all they, all them is in there. And, you know, I'm hoping my boy Rublev continues his, uh, you know, his little trend. I, I don't know why, but I like that dude. I just feel like he's, you know, he's unassuming. I think he's very emotional. He's always that one. Just always, you just look like he need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, he's he's my guy. I like that guy. I like him. So did did you uh, come up with who you think is going to make it to the semis? For this I, you know what? I I didn't do that actually. No, I didn't. So um, well, and I'll I don't even have the draw in front of me, bro. Well, Go ahead. But I'll tell you, and you may a lot of times we think the same way about things. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, although yeah. it's a it's a good tourney draw i think it's going to be the top four seeds i think mm -hmm. up top you're going to have medvedev uh meeting um uh meeting uh hatch it off mm -hmm. and i think in the bottom half you're going to have rublev meeting shababalov shababalov yeah so, i think so so where do you go from there if, <sighs> if, if, if we say that's what where we're going to be who do you see going to the finals and who do you see coming up with the win i think it's going to be an all russian final I okay. would say it would be Medvedev versus Rublev. Okay. And, um, you know, I just feel like Medvedev has something to prove based on his poor showing on that clay. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this is not clay, I would, I think Daniil is probably going to snatch it. I, I, I do. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to throw him. And remember, he's kind of got that older brother, little brother thing with uh, Rublev. With Rublev. So it's kind of a, yeah. there's, there's some mental stuff there um, when they play. Exactly. Uh, I, I totally agree. Um, and our and so we have about a good ten minutes left. I yeah, wanted yeah. To, to let's take a look at some of the comments that are coming through on IG Live. Uh, cool, cool. I see Nick talking about the Ameri the American men being soft. So what's, <laughs> what's new there? Uh, oh, but but uh, but okay. We got to give shout out to Tiafo for winning okay. the challenger this week in Parma. Oh, and see, I hadn't even looked at those results. He won that. He won that, huh? Yeah, he won that. Okay, so, uh, good. All so, right. You know, if you can't last in a major, then go ahead and get that challenger. You get know? that challenger. That's right. Scoop you up some points. Get you some, you know, confidence because that's really what it's about. And I feel like that's definitely for Tiafo. He just needs to get his confidence right because right. he plays really good tennis when he's confident. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. we still are looking for the impact of Wayne Ferreira not being yes. a part of his, his coaching camp. So, right. um, we, we, hey, look, we still got our fingers crossed for Francis. So hopefully maybe 2021 will be a really good year for him. I hope so. I, I do believe, like we were both talking about, Wayne Ferreira is a great add to his team. I think he's going to bring a level of, of just – I hate to use the word professionalism – but mm -hmm. I do feel like Wayne Ferrer to me was the consummate professional during his yes. playing career. And I feel like he can bring a lot of that to Tiafo. So I, I really like the fact that he's on, he's in his camp. I really, really do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing a question. Uh, does Serena need to switch up her coach going into 2021? Man. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say because, you know, Patrick is off doing, he's doing his thing. Patrick is trying to be Nick Volatieri 2.0, if not right. 5.0. So right. I, he got Coco, he got CeCe Paz, he got some of everybody right. that he works with. Popperin. Popperin. Yeah. I mean, so, so she, but at the, at the same time, do you want someone new in your ear if you know you pretty much only have one year left? That's the thing that would that makes me a little bit hesitant is do you want that mixed messaging then to start getting there getting in there and maybe then instead of Serena making finals and semifinals, maybe she get knocked out in the third and fourth round. You know what I'm saying? Or do you not give your last good year to the same person who hasn't been able to get it done the last couple? Yeah. I it's a great argument, man. It's a great I, argument. We see uh Martina as a recommendation um now remember i can't remember who it was was it chanda rubin who told us uh that taylor didn't have martina because you know she probably couldn't afford martina well we know that ain't the case for, ain't serena. The case for serena that's for damn sure <laughs> you know serena got them ends plus uh you no you no you no, didn't <laughs> You better Nick. put that Martina uh, Higgins back in the show. 
Stay uh, man, uh, or, or, or Chris Everett, Nick, you gonna oh, Chris about, Ever you about to get booted. And then, what, what oh, okay, he said kitty. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, what? She ain't got nothing she can tell uh, Serena Williams. No, or Chrissy Everett. No, no, no. 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 The answer is no. Don't bring that here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do it. <laughs> oh, Billie Jean King. Now, that would be a good one, you know. I love me some BJK, man. Don't trip. So, because I think that BJK would bring what I would consider to be just a lot of that good philosophy, that life knowledge you know what right. i'm saying i love me some bjk y'all don't trip right i just i feel like from that standpoint she would bring sort of a different feel not i don't know how that would translate for her on court though uh -huh. that would be the thing is how would it translate for serena on the court and i, I don't know but yeah, i think that's an interesting one go ahead bro. yeah because serena has to have somebody that she respects correct right. correct and, and we know billy jean martina they kind of fit that they kind of fit that yeah they right. fit that bill um and i tell you what if you know serena is talking all you know women power and all that kind of stuff what would be a better example of giving you know a woman a good shine from a coaching standpoint right 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 than giving them that exposure to be coaching serena in this final year going for 24. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be you know i think that'd be great i'd love to see that That'd be it, it would be awesome. I tell you what. I because don't know why. But, oh, go ahead. Because go. I'm saying, because then Patrick can go and, and start working on Coco Golf serve and figure out why she's throwing in 19 double faults <laughs> in one match. Don't make no sense. Don't make no sense. Can't have it. Got to do better than that. And that's it, that, it's funny. That's what Paul he just put. Zena crossed my mind for a quick second. I was like, I wonder if maybe a Zena Garrison. You know? Maybe. Yeah. I maybe mean, you know. Would, I don't, I, when we talked to Zena, it didn't sound like Zena was really interested in the coaching life. No, <laughs> no, she, she had enough with Taylor. <laughs> so, so we already know that's her position coming in. Yeah, yeah. we probably want to let that one go. Probably, yeah, probably wouldn't let that one go. But Wait uh, a minute, Wait a minute, Reggie's telling us, stop it with the Billie Jean King, she's not a coach. Oh, come on now. She coached Fed Cup, she coached all kinds of things. Come on now, come on now. I need you to stop. I need you to stop. <laughs> BJ Cake and coach. She can. <laughs> I want you to reevaluate. Go sit in the corner. And I want you to think about that. <laughs> and I want you to come back. You better put some respect on BJK. <laughs> <laughs> you better respect her gangster. Look, exactly. like we said, a notorious RBG. That's notorious BJK. Don't trip. Right. Right. Don't yes. you trip on my BJK now. Come on now. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Uh, is, is, yeah. there, is there any guy that you would think of that she, I mean, you know, we, we give a lot of respect to like Paul Anacone. Um, no, not with Serena. Different personality types. I, okay. I, I, you need some, yeah, you got to have somebody that's a little bit more feisty. Um, and Paul is just too calm. Okay. Uh, he way too, he way too damn calm. Remember, he used to coach Sloan. Right, he couldn't. He couldn't handle Sloan. He couldn't even handle Sloan. So you know, you know, he ain't gonna be a hand in that so nasty. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, no, no. Um, yeah, I mm, no, I, I can't think of anybody on the on the men's side that that no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. It's a Got short it. list, man. It's a short list. Right, right. You know, I mean, damn. Quietly, okay. hell, get get uh, Michael Jordan out there. <laughs> yeah, you saw how big when he was in the last well, Mike, dance. Well, yeah. well, Michael would have. <laughs> she she be ready to cut somebody. You get my. <laughs> Shoot. Absolutely. Yeah, you get Jordan out there. Yeah, that that about, I mean, honestly, bro. That's the level that you would need in order to be at a, you know, because Serena's uh -huh. great. She's uh -huh. one of the greatest. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What's that? Uh -huh. Stop this noise about John McEnroe. That no, 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 no and no. no. And as much respect as I have for John McEnroe, um, I really do. I have a lot of respect for him. He, um, that is not a good fit in any way, shape, nor form. 
I think uh, it would be a lot of this. Yeah, whole lot of this. No, I can't. No. Yeah, no. We're going to explain we're, we're, that. We're, <laughs> yeah. Now, now, and I love, hey, look, I'm Paul, I'm, you know, Linda was my guy. But once again, I don't think that's a good compatibility uh, type thing. Because, right. uh, you know, Yvonne is like, do as I say or, or bounce. And, See, I would think maybe like a Stefan Edberg, even though I think he might be a little too calm for Serena. But I think she would respect him, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, she because he was with Federer, he was with Fed, so you know that that lends itself a level of credibility. Right, right. It's not yeah. it's like like you said, it's not a deep pool from which mm -hmm. you can pull for somebody like uh, a Serena Williams. You know, she, um, and some I saw somebody earlier say Venus. Venus can't coach herself. <laughs> um, so how is she gonna coach somebody else? So we're gonna leave that alone. Uh, we're gonna let we're gonna let we're gonna let uh, Venus continue the farewell <laughs> tour, and, right? And, and and like somebody <laughs> say, prepare for her doubles life with Olivia. Um, <laughs> exactly. We're gonna let that go. Uh, oh man! So we are coming here to the end of our time. Uh, I, I, I want to say a big thank you to all of you out there that have been engaging us all. Yeah, episode. we love it's been this. good. It yeah, make, it makes it great. We are getting ready to hop off of IG Live and go over to Locker Room. So for those of you that have um, access to Locker Room, we're doing the after show there, and we're gonna really uh, kind of bust some of this um, stuff up a little more. Uh, there, but we will be back next week to give you the results of the St. Petersburg Open, and we also have a very special interview that we did that is going to be released on Thursday. We're not going to tell you who it is, but look out for it. It was an awesome interview, and we think you all, you all will really enjoy it. Uh, yes. Isaac, any final words from you this week? No, no. The only thing for me is uh, just FYI, we we are doing some things with our products, our merchandising. Yeah. So be just know that we're coming at you with some different things. So be on the lookout. We'll let you know as we as we move forward here. But outside of that, bro, I'm good. All right, and Paul, stop it. Uh, so <laughs> with that, we're gonna go ahead and sign off and jump over to locker room. This has been your boy Bryce, and this is your boy Isaac, and we are.